So let's start taking a look at the different, the other types of carboxylic acid derivatives. So we've already seen that if we take an acid chloride with sodium borohydride, we are going to generate the, the primary alcohol in this particular case. All right. And we also saw that this would give us the same product. But remember that the reaction conditions are slightly different. With lithium aluminum hydride, you have to do it in two steps. You do the lithium aluminum hydride and then an acidic workup. And with sodium borohydride, you may or you don't need to do it. Sometimes you do, but it's a little bit more flexible that you could do it in just one step instead of two steps over here. So what do we have here? If we treat a acid anhydride with sodium borohydride, does this react? And will it react? And the answer is yes. We are going to reduce the, this to a alcohol. Right, like that right there. But guess what? Then you have this side as well. So this R is that R. But this one right here is going to turn into the carboxylic acid, okay? Now what happens, okay, well let's compare over here now. Look at the difference here. So we will get the same product here for that piece right here. But then the R prime is going to give us another, uh, is it going to give us the carboxylic acid? This is the crazy thing. It doesn't. It will take that first carboxylic acid that's generated and reduce it again. So you're going to get another alcohol that looks like this. R prime, like that. So with, when you take an acid anhydride and treat it with lithium aluminum hydride, you're going to get two alcohols. But with sodium borohydride, you're only going to get one and a carboxylic acid. And why is that? It's because if I'm going to skip the ester, I'm going to go right to the carboxylic acid. If you try to reduce a carboxylic acid with sodium borohydride, nothing happens. No reduction. But with lithium aluminum hydride, there is a reaction slash reduction, and you are going to generate an alcohol. Okay, so this stays as the carboxylic acid, but if you do the reduction with lithium aluminum hydride, that very carboxylic acid gets reduced to the alcohol. Now, the quick answer to why does sodium borohydride not reduce carboxylic acids, but lithium aluminum hydride does? The easy answer is lithium aluminum hydride is a stronger reducing agent. It requires more effort to uh, reduce carboxylic acids. Remember how they're lower on the rung, on the ladder? Okay, now what about our esters here? What's going to happen with esters here? If we do that, we are going to generate two alcohols. We're going to have this one, where we added the two hydrogens there, plus this piece right here is going to uh, be an alcohol there. So we get two alcohols there, but guess what? We have to make sure we understand this concept right here, that this is very, very slow. very slow, and so people do not reduce esters with sodium borohydride because it's just so slow. But lithium aluminum hydride is, like I've said, a much stronger reducing agent, so that does work very fast and very efficiently, and I'm going to sneak it in. Let's do a different color. We'll just sneak it in right here, like so. Okay, and just generates that alcohol plus the OR prime like that. All right, <clears throat> beautiful. 
And now our last one is our amide. Okay. No reduction for this guy. Okay. No reduction. Sodium borohydride's not strong enough. But lithium aluminum hydride is. Okay. And so that's going to generate, this is interesting, not an alcohol, but our amine. Like so. Okay, so now when we now when we kind of remember these uh, features of these two reagents and what they can do very well, what they can't do very well, or not at all, then we can use that to our advantage. Okay, so this is really cool. So I'm going to. Uh, uh, let's see, I'm just going to erase this top part right here so I can create a little bit more room to show you a reaction here. What if I had, let's see, let's say I had an ester, okay, and a ketone right there, and an alkene. And I want to selectively reduce only the ketone. So I want a product that looks like this. Okay, so that's and making sure I got the carbon count right. One, two, three, four. Do I have that right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. So what I want to do is selectively there, I want to selectively reduce the ketone to an alcohol, but I want to leave the ester right there. I want the ester to stay, and I want the double bond to stay. So which reagent should I use in order to make this transformation happen? And so if we go back to our uh, table here, if I chose lithium aluminum hydride, I see, hey, We've seen from previous videos that lithium aluminum hydride does in fact reduce ketones. We've seen that before. But it begs the question, does it react with esters? And I, here's an ester, and yes it does. Lithium aluminum hydride does react with esters. But does sodium borohydride react with esters? Very, very slowly. So if we take this reaction and say, hey, we don't want the esters touched. So if we decide to use sodium borohydride, then we can selectively reduce the ketone and not touch the ester. So there's power. We can't always just think, oh, sodium borohydride can't do these things. It sucks. It's a bad reagent. No. It's good that it can't do those because now we can selectively reduce certain functional groups and not reduce others based off of this ability right here. So I, it, I think that's very cool and very powerful technique. So now what I want to do is show you the mechanism of how to, re to reduce a carboxylic acid into an alcohol using lithium aluminum hydride, but not sodium borohydride. So if I take a generic carboxylic acid, like so, and I treat it with sodium borohydride, okay, which this, and in this particular case, we can look at the, the boron atom or the borohydride right here as just an H minus, right? So what happens is that sodium borohydride is slightly basic. And so what happens is the hydride comes in and grabs that acidic proton, and that's going to generate our carboxylate plus hydrogen gas. And that's going to bubble away, and we can't get that back. And so that's where the reaction stops. It forms the carboxylate, and the carboxylate's the lowest rung 
on the ladder. It's like way down there. And so it's just not very, it's just, that's where it's going to stop. Now when we use lithium aluminum hydride, it does reduce the carboxylic acid to an alcohol. And in previous videos, we said, hey, the lithium aluminum hydride could just be represented as a hydride, okay? But in this, to understand this transformation, we can't use this simplistic uh, way of looking at it. We have to realize that, hey, this aluminum atom right there plays a very important role for this transformation to take place. Whereas when you look at the boron atom, that didn't help. It doesn't play a role in, uh, it's because this boron atom is not a metal that does not allow us to convert it to an alcohol. So there's the difference in the one major difference between those two reducing agents. We have a boron atom and a metal. Okay, so those, that's going to help us out here. So when we take a close look at the mechanism here of what happens, I'm going to take this aluminum species or this aluminum hydride, and I'm going to expand it out. Okay, there's our aluminum, and then we have our hydrides here. That aluminum's negatively charged there. What's going to happen is the electrons, okay, in this oxygen hydrogen bond are going to come and attack the aluminum. Okay? And then this aluminum hydrogen bond right there is going to come and let's use this one. It's going to come and grab that proton there, like that. So what does that do for us here? Okay, so this is analogous to a simple proton, not a simple, a proton transfer. It's going to look a little different here. We're going to get the R like this, O aluminum H3 plus H2 gas. So that's going to bubble away. And, and so that aluminum there, does that have a negative charge there? And it has four bonds, so that has to be negatively charged. Okay. So now that we have this aluminum attached, we can now invoke, hey, let's just look at the lithium aluminum hydride as a hydride. Okay, we can use that version now because now the hydride is just going to come in here like that and do, our, do a nucleophilic addition step. So that's going to give us a species that looks like this, negatively charged. Our hydrogen was added, and then we have that species right there. Okay. <clears throat> now we have what we have here is a, a leaving group here. Okay. So in this tetrahedral intermediate, we can take this lone pair and bring that down. And then that's going to kick off the O aluminum. So we have our nucleophilic elimination step. Sorry, our nucleophile elimination. And then we've generated a aldehyde. And so we do the same things that we've seen up to this point. When you have a hydride with a aldehyde. And so I'm not going to show you that part of the mechanism because we've already done that already. But overall, what's going to happen is you are going to generate your alcohol. All right. So the reason, why, one main reason why the lithium aluminum hydride can reduce carboxylic acids and sodium borohydride cannot is because that metal forms a bond with that oxygen there. And that allows this oxygen right here to fall off or to be a leaving group. Whereas with the sodium borohydride, you just generate the carboxylate and that's it. And there's no way to get that, that oxygen right there to just leave. 
O minus is a horrible leaving group and will not leave. But when it's like this, it can. Okay. Let's see here. Well, I changed my mind. Let's do the mechanism real quick just to wrap it up here. So our hydride would come in like that. So that would be what? A nucleophilic addition step right there. So that would generate this guy. O minus hydrogen. And then we would have to uh, do the second step, which is the acidic workup. So we could, so that would simply be a proton transfer and acidic workup. So we would have some acid present. Okay, and then we would just do a simple proton transfer. Take some of those electrons, do the proton transfer to give us our product right here. Just like so. And there's our, our alcohol. Pretty slick meth. Uh, mechanism. Great.